Welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I'm Tony Guerra, pharmacist and author of the Memorizing Pharmacology book series, bringing you mnemonics, cases, and advice for succeeding in pharmacology. Sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Let's get started with the show. Okay, and we are going to Okay, welcome to Poisons and Antidotes, Pharmacology Mnemonics. Um, what I'm really doing here is just, um, I kind of always have to find some way to put things in an order. And when you talk about poisons and antidotes, it really, by definition, is just matching. And so how do you match things up? So what I did was uh, I put them in alphabetical order first. So I took a number of poisons or drugs that you can overdose on, and five of them happened to start with A. Then a couple started with B, C, D, then E, uh, then H, and then I finished up with O, P, P, S, and W. And so when we talk about these poisons and antidotes, it's really about just keeping them straight in your head and then making a small connection uh, to try to help you remember which medication or which uh, poison ends up with which antidote. So let's start with the A's first of all. Uh, Acetaminophen's antidote is acetylcysteine. So you can use the acet in the very beginning of both of those. Our praesalam and diazepam uh, have flumazenil as their uh, antidote. So the A's in alprazolam, the A's in azepam, and more generally the stems, azolam and azepam, for all the benzodiazepines. Uh, flumazenil is uh, the antidote there. Uh, anthrax, you can, if you think of a mirror as anthrax is the poison, and ciprofloxacin is the antidote. Well, if you put a mirror in front of this, X turns around to XA. So just think of this be Xing out anthrax or something like that. Okay. Amitriptyline and aspirin have the same antidote. It's both sodium bicarb. And the nice thing is that both of them start with an A. So A for amitriptyline goes with the B and C for bicarb. So ABC. A in aspirin goes with the B and C for bicarb, so A, B, C again. So once you get these first five down, then you can kind of move on to the next one. We're going to use a couple different letters uh, to kind of move along with those. So we're going to go B, C, D, E, H. <laughs> uh, it didn't quite work out the way I wanted, but again, uh, you know, we're just trying to uh, get some kind of order uh, so that when we look at the um, antidotes, it works out. So beta blockers and calcium channel blockers uh, both use glucagon uh, as a way to have an antidote. And a couple of things I was thinking about here, um, when you have a beta blocker, it masks the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia, that normal increased heart rate and things like that, uh, it tends to be gone. So glucagon is something that you use when the glucose is gone. And if you think of beta blockers masking hypoglycemia, maybe it'll all kind of stick in your head. And then glucagon again, especially with non-dihydropyridines that are going to affect the heart, much like beta blockers do. We try not to use beta blockers and non-dihydropyridine, pyridine, uh, calcium channel blockers together. Uh, maybe that helps you as well. Um, digoxin. And digibind, uh, I think that that really helps that, you know, first three letters are the exact same, uh, but digibind or joxin immune fab, uh, that tends to be one most people can remember. Uh, ethylene glycol uh, is a poison, well, <clears throat> it's not, it's a poison if you try to ingest it. Uh, and fomepazole, uh, which is an ADH antagonist, uh, those are an E and F. Okay, so we're going B, C, D, D, E, F. And then heparin and protamine, you might not see this, but it's kind of a word scramble. If you take the E, P, A, R, I, N from heparin, you can find E, P, 
A-R-I-N in protamine. So just a way to connect them and hopefully kind of burn these into your brain. Uh, the last five I was going to go over are two that also have the same antidote, organophosphates, which maybe we do or don't think about as cholinergic. And it would be atropine, which is the anticholinergic drug, right? Uh, physostigmine, uh, which is also cholinergic. Well, it's an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, which keeps that acetylcholine from being broken down. So it is in effect cholinergic. Uh, atropine again is anticholinergic, works against it. Uh, potassium, you think about K plus on the periodic table of elements. What's right next to potassium? Well, it's buddy calcium, CA plus plus. And they both have that hard K sound in the beginning uh, to maybe help you put those together. But uh, the calcium or calium that uh, the K represents, which is potassium, and then the calcium CA uh, gluconate that you would use for that. Serotonin syndrome. And although I, I heard it called cyproheptadine, you can call it ciproheptadine to make it easier. Uh, serotonin syndrome and ciproheptadine to use an S sound to connect those. And then warfarin and vitamin K. And if you think of killing happening in warfare, that's one way to remember vitamin K goes with warfarin as an antidote. So again, I this is very much uh, you know an educational video meant to help you uh, just um, you know remember many of the poisons and overdose and antidotes. But if something does happen, uh, make sure to call your poison control center as. Always, this is for informational purposes only. It is not medical advice. If you have a medical question, contact a medical professional. Thanks for listening to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. You can find episodes, cheat sheets, and more at memorizingpharm.com. Again, you can sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Thanks again for listening.